All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Rocking with you here on a Sunday. Uh, not that much stuff to cover. You know, it's the off season. Uh, I want to talk about this a little, real quickly. Uh, you know, I've talked about Dame Litter probably too much for a team that I don't think that's going to make the playoffs. But he said, you know, proud to be known for committing to one team. Uh, he said a title wouldn't be as fulfilling elsewhere. Listen, him talking about a title is ridiculous. Like, you want to be known to commit to one team, that's your prerogative. Um, I don't think his name has really came up in the trade conversations no more. Like I said, those musical chairs are kind of, he's run out of chairs. I think everybody's moved on. Um, but to say, like, title wouldn't be fulfilling elsewhere, you're not winning a title. You're not going to go to the playoffs with this team, probably. So you chose your loyalty. You were rewarded handsomely for that $60 million a year. Um, in the final two years of your deal, congratulations. But to say title wouldn't be fulfilling as elsewhere, that's like me saying a title in the NBA wouldn't be as fulfilling uh, from my house as if I played on an NBA team. So because I can't play from my house, I'm not going to chase a title. Like I have as much chance of winning a title as Dame Miller has. Let's just be factual. No one wants to go there. KD didn't even consider it. It's not on his list of teams. They don't have the assets. They're going to be paying him $60 million. So improving the team is going to be hard, but I can't say that because, once again, no one wants to go there. The fact of the matter is Dame is not a big enough draw to bring players in. Part of the reason that KD wants to go to the Suns is he wants to play with Book. So that has to be part of the equation now, too. Like, Dame, you're not drawing players in yourself. Like no one is sitting, knocking down the door and saying, I got to play with Dave. So, I mean, you can say this, he's compared himself to Dirk and Giannis, but I, I, he's not in that tier. He's more, he's way closer to Bradley Bill than he is to Dirk and Giannis. So he can't say, oh, I'm staying loyal. Look at that architect. Look at that model. He's not on the, of their caliber, you know, and I'm not of his caliber as a player. I mean, I think both things are obvious, right? So, but congrats to him. He got his money, but like, I think that's cap. That's like in a way to try to shame the players um, for, you know, using their agency to dictate where they want. Like, Hey, you, you're known for one team. That's fine and grand, but I think constantly reinforcing it and bringing it up is almost trying to slight players that do it. And like, Hey, everybody should do what they want to do. Bradley Bill stayed, you stayed, uh, you're not asking for a trade. Your name's not really coming up in trade talks anymore. I think everybody's kind of moved on from the both of them. And uh, it's fine. Now, one thing I think that team should consider is because those guys, you can pay them and they can stay, but they're not changing your fortunes. Both teams are going to struggle to make the playoffs, the Wizards and the, the Blazers. But then there are good guys that are good enough to change your folk fortunes that are willing to stay, a Jokic in a smaller market, uh, a Giannis, a Dirk. And I was thinking about it today, and um, I think that a path that teams, especially the smaller market teams, need to uh, pursue is when there is a star European player or a star foreign player, that's the one that they need to draft. For example, you know, Lucas seems like he's happy. Uh, Giannis didn't leave. Um, Jokic has signed his contract. He has no intention to leave. There was a video of Jokic. I'll show you. Jokic dancing. There's a video of him dancing on the internet. Oh, yeah. Shirt off from Serbia. My man don't care. He don't care about playing in LA or playing in New York or where he's summering. He's back home. Giannis, same thing. Giannis, as soon as the season over, he takes his family, Nigeria. Um, he takes his family to Greece and stuff like that. Uh, same with Luca. Luca goes straight overseas. They don't care where they play. They're just playing here. They go overseas to live their lives like they normally do. So that might be a um, that might be a a. Uh, a, a strategy that teams need to pursue. So if you're a team like the Spurs right now, they're going full tank. And it looks like they're going full tank for a win by Yana. 
um, Utah. They should go full tank if they have their picks. I don't know if they have their pick, but if they have their pink, they should go full, full tank. Um, Charlotte, every small market team that doesn't have it right, the Pacers, they should go full tank this season because you have an opportunity to get a star and a star who's most likely not persuaded about living in LA or New York or Miami or Houston. So this is a chance to get a star that you don't have to worry about. As long as you treat them right, they're going to stay. Because the European and the overseas players, they stay. They don't care about the, all this stuff. They didn't grow up in America like that. So that's something to uh, – that's that's a, a strategy that small market teams, I think, need to really look into and, and kind of uh, um, employ. So um, what else do we got here? Um Wall happy not to be Batman for clips. Yeah, I, I think he's a great fit. He's a great fit for them. Uh, that's the deepest team in the league. Uh, NFL is slow. Williams, first offensive lineman to make the 99 Madden Club. That's weird. You would think all the great linemen that he would not be the first one to do it. But, I mean, I guess. Madden ratings is crazy. I remember one year uh, Ray Lewis was a 69 speed. Ray Lewis, he was in prime. The year that they won the Super Bowl, he was a 69 speed in Madden. 69. Just moving like molasses. And then and then what happened is, uh, what really happened was Michael Vick. Because Ray Lewis could be 69 speed you know, it's still a running league. You know, Moss had just, I think it was Moss's second season that that one. So Moss was just running streaks past, but that was a that was a guy, a receiver. But once Vic became Vic, then you can't have a linebacker at 69 speed. He's out of there. So uh you actually have to give the linebackers and the linemen their proper speed. Because Vic, I mean, the first year of the game, because they didn't have like QB contained rush lanes and stuff like that. The first year with Vic, it was just ridiculous. My man Marty was was killing us all with that, with Vic. Just running around, going crazy. So um, let's see. There was something on PFL I wanted to talk about, pro football talk. And I don't do the gossip stuff, but uh, go look at this story at uh, about my man, uh, <laughs> Zach Wilson. That's a crazy story about him. I don't know if it's true or not, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, there's nothing really here. So I'll just go ahead and leave it there. It's nothing really to talk about on this one so i'll just go ahead and leave it there um i'm gonna drop in the jags and the bills tomorrow so check that out the game is the game all right thank you for watching this clip do me a favor push the button hit subscribe come on man push it come on everybody up push the goddamn button push the goddamn button you heard what she said and do what's right you heard her push the button the game is the game so what's up man what's up with you otherwise you know uh the game is the game Always.